Okay, let's get started. Let's get started. Really appreciate this. Happy Valentine's Day. Guys, make sure you take care of the ladies. Ladies, I uh, feel special. Uh, I know it's a stressful time. Everyone is stressed out, but it, it all depends on how you handle the stress for the next couple of weeks and certainly on game day. So there's nothing really to be done to remove the stress. It's really just how you handle it. And the people who handle it the best and stick to those fundamentals we're always talking about, those are the ones that are always successful. So like always, very quickly and briefly, I'm going to talk a little bit about where most people are, what to be doing, focusing on for the next couple of weeks, excuse me. And then we'll talk about that last weekend, the Sunday, Monday, the night before the MBE, et cetera, some practical tips, suggestions, things to be aware of and some things maybe to help you right before as you are about to take the test, okay? And like always, then we'll open it up uh, last couple of minutes for any questions. We'll try to, you know, grab a few that we can uh, that we can get to. So number one, I referenced this a couple of weeks ago when we were together. If you're taking both parts, I'll split it up and talk a little bit about the people doing both parts versus someone just taking the MBE. You're taking both parts. Number one thing to do is maintain balance, Got to maintain balance between both parts. Too many people overcompensate. Either they're not feeling good about MBE, so they go all in and do 100 questions a day and have no time for MEE or MPTs or vice versa. They say, well, I stink at MBE. I'll do a quick set and I'll spend all my time with the writing. Has to be balance. How do you balance that, John? Again, these are broad, generic suggestions. You tailor it to whatever's comfortable for you. Again, the goal is the balance. So me... I recommend a daily MBE set in exam mode now, in exam mode. You got to get used to seeing one question after the next. In exam mode, all seven subjects, you know, 35 to 40, 40, 45 tops, because again, that's about an hour and a half, leaves you time for review. You do that in the morning, you take your break for lunch. Now you can shift over to essays and stuff in the afternoon. I'm working, John. I don't have time for all of that. Okay, okay. Then you reduce the set and you do 25 or 30 after work or wherever you can in your schedule. Smaller set, but some MBE, mix set, exam mode, seven days a week through the Sunday before the bar. Not 100 a day. Don't stop doing questions Monday to Friday and then do 150 on Saturday and Sunday like a lot of people do. That constant repetition. I just had a student this morning. Uh, email me. I had not heard from them for a while and was doing fantastic on MBE quote, stop doing MBE for a week to focus on their state portion. And their 71% went down to 59. What, what happened, John? Well, you stopped doing MBE. You stop doing the set day to day to day and staying out of that mindset of how to read those questions. The number's going to go down. That's just the way it is. And then you freak out when you're doing too many at one shot. Small, maintain, daily set, no matter what. You can fluctuate the number a little bit, but you want to do it in exam mode. I recommend, in addition to that, you pick one MBE topic a day, random MBE topic. And throughout the day, when I'm not sitting at the desk studying, I'm refreshing and reciting those rules. Larceny by trick, burglary, robbery, murder, manslaughter, equal protection, due pro just hear yourself say. Check your notes, speak, speak, recite, recite. Build confidence that you're weaning off of the outline, off of the notes. Can't remember everything. If you remember 2% more than you did yesterday or last week, that's a lot of questions. That's a lot of points. It's not about what you can't. It's about what you can. So for MBE, mix that in exam mode, a little more, a little less, some recitation of law in a single subject by next uh, week, by next Wednesday, you'll have reviewed all seven subjects. And guess what? You can do almost all seven all over again till the following Wednesday. Two weeks of good review plus questions, you're good to go. If you're still looking to do, I'm not a huge proponent of finishing all of the OPEs. It's a, it's a goal. Sure, they're there. They're great to practice. But I think too many people get obsessed with them. And again, you know what happens. If you do 100, that's a half a day. Then you got a review. Then you're not doing your MEEs or MPTs. So if you want to do one this weekend, you want to say, hey, Saturday morning, I'm going to get up, do 100 for the confidence, for the security, for just that whole stamina thing. Perfectly fine, no problem. But don't just be doing them for four or five days in a row and then leaving out the the essay and MPT. You got to be balanced. So that daily set, I think, is key in exam mode. 
when you're doing the questions, what else happens this time? If you're only taking the MBE, only taking the MBE, sure, you have a little more time on your hands. But again, especially those people who are working, which most people are, again, daily set, max 40 to 50, average 25, 30, 30, 35, in exam mode, and your review of the law. You have more time on your hands, get the hell out of the house. You shouldn't be needing to do that many more. If you have more time, like I said, four to 50, that's an hour and a half of questions. Doing 100 a day, in my humble opinion, you're going to burn out by the time you get to the bar. And what happens when you do that many every day? You end up chasing the score, chasing the number. I did 61%. The guy get to 62. I'm doing 62. You're almost worrying about the number. And what are you now doing? Taking your eye off the most important thing, which is the reading comprehension, which is I'm about to get to. So no matter where you are, taking both, just MBE, the number one place you're going to steal more points for the next couple of weeks is better reading comp, reducing the silly mistakes. Before I forget, the numbers, the stats, you get obsessed with that after 1,000 questions, 1,500 questions, 1,200 questions. The number isn't going to change much. Okay, statistically speaking, after a certain number, you can go 50 out of 50, but the overall number is not going up. You want to use the, the, the stats page and focus on the last three days, five days, the last seven days, the last week, the day to day to day now. God willing, you are doing better now than you were doing back in December and early January. So be more, more importantly, don't be focusing on the overall number. Focus on those day to day numbers to make sure you're feeling consistent. Don't try to do... And that's another thing. Somebody's at 61, 62, 59, 63, and they've done a 1,500 questions. They're just doing tons of questions because they want to see the overall number go up. It's too many questions to make you do that. Don't chase that. You focus on just trying to peak on exam day. And if your last two to three weeks number is higher than what you did in December and January, you know you're improving. You know you're doing a great job. When you're doing the questions, whether it's 20, 30, 40, 50, Again, what happens this time of year? The stress, the anxiety, the essay, the that, da 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 Again, the goal is to finish, and you get more sloppy with the reading comprehension. Stick to the fundamentals. This is the most important thing. You can be talking to yourself, put a Post-it next to the laptop, whatever you need to do, going back to basics. What does John preach? What's the issue? What do the facts say? What is each answer about? You got that cool thing on it that you can, you know, you can take that mouse and hit the language of the answer to kind of gray it out. I'm a big guy with the whooshing. You know, A is wrong You're on the paper on exam day. Just cross that sucker out. Do things that are aggressive to eliminate the answers. Be more of an aggressive reader. Don't sit there and go like this. Oh, my God, I hope I'm right. What's the issue? The call of the question isn't going to tell you most of the time. We've talked about this a million times. If John sues Bob for his damages, that's torts, but what tort? The facts will tell you. Is the statute constitutional? Equal protection, due process, come. The facts will tell you. Is the statement admissible? Character impeachment hearsay? The facts will tell you. So again, this time of year, when you're doing a lot of questions, you're focusing on, let me get to the answer. Let me do the next one. Let me do the next one. And you're overly focusing on the qu question and answer, and you take away the focus from the most important part, which is the facts. What is John going to say now? Slow the hell down. Slow down. If you take more time up here, you go faster down here. So lo don't lose the most important fundamental, which is the reading of the facts, which is what everyone does this time of year, because you're trying to do too many too quickly. This is where you need the composure. That game on Sunday, pretty unbelievable, huh? Whether you watched it or not. If you didn't, I'll tell you what happened. If you did, you know what I'm going to say. And I'll skip ahead a little bit. No matter how great you did or will do in bar prep, when you go into those respective halls, convention centers, testing centers, nothing feels like it did in practice, right? That's just the way it is. You're home, you got your little stuffed animal by the desk, your feety pajamas, your favorite socks, your sweatshirt, you got all your little accoutrement by your desk. You know, you got the home field advantage, literally. You're feeling comfortable on my laptop, I'm clicking, clicking, I'm, oh, I'm a, I'm a genius. You go into one of those strange places with three or 4,000 people, oh my God, it doesn't feel the same. That was that game on Sunday. They're playing the same game of football. The kicker missed a simple little, the simplest kick you can have as a football kicker. He had kicked 68 out of 68 in a row. Missed one. And what did the announcer said? Yeah, because when you do it in front of 120 million people and you know it's for all the marbles, it just feels different. 
Guys were dropping balls all over the place, making stupid mistakes that they never make. Why? Because you're thinking, I don't want to be the one to drop the ball. The anxiety and the stress makes people make those mistakes. They're making physical mistakes. You make the mental mistakes. Why is that guy so unbelievable? Mahomes from the Chiefs. And why did they win? Because he's cool as a cucumber. He lets the game come to him. He doesn't push. He doesn't force. He knows when to attack. He knows when to back up. He's in control. You let these fact patterns come to you. Let the answers come to you. Don't push. Don't go too fast. Don't let the adrenaline. Oh my God, let's go. Let's go. Calm down. It's a reading test. When that respective proctor says begin, close your eyes, take a big Zen deep breath, read, just read. I could not be more serious. That's much more important than any rule you're going to shove in your head for the last two weeks. So when you're practicing your day to day, if you practice better for two weeks, you perform better. One team, the, the 49ers said they had, didn't know about the, the uh, overtime rules. The Chiefs have been talking about those rules since, since the summer. The more prepared, the more you stick to the fundamentals in practice, the more prepared you are when all the chips are down and the uh, pressure is on. Practice slowly and carefully. Now, you perform that way even when you're nauseous and your hands are clammy. When you, review, when you get a question wrong, again, this time of year, too many students are overly focusing on the detailed explanations. Of course, I'm biased and prejudiced. The explanations are great on Adaptive Bar, but at this point in time, now, less than two weeks before the bar, you shouldn't be making outlines from the explanations. When you get a question wrong, the first thing you want to do is compare the red and the green, your answer and the correct answer. And the first question, I said this a few weeks ago, you need to ask is, did I miss this question because I forgot a piece or an element of the rule? Or I knew it, but I did poor reading. When you make a mistake, you just presume, I'm, I guess I didn't know what I was doing. So you read the explanation. Now you're nine lines into the, oh, I didn't remember that. Oh, that was about a case. Oh, that's an interesting rule. And now you start making an outline from the explanations. And then people always call and email, you know, John, I think I'm learning a lot from the explanations. When I hear that, I think, uh-oh, they're making another outline from all the explanation, which is, the, what's the problem? They're not memorizing the stupid little buzzwords they forgot, or B, they knew the underlying rule. But sometimes the explanation goes into a lot of minutia of law. But that's not why you missed the question. It's the reading comprehension. I should have seen that. I, I went too fast. Didn't spot the issue. It was the man, not the friend. He didn't want to steal. You know what I'm talking about. Focus on the reading comp. Why did I get it wrong? Did I miss the issue? Did I see the issue, but I let another answer distract me? Remember, you want to lead into the answers. Go into the answers knowing what you're looking for, which you only can do if you slow down in the facts. So when you're reviewing the mistakes, don't right away say, let me go back to my outline. Let me reread all the explanations. In the first two sentences, you should know, I forgot that. Well, I can't believe I forgot that buzzword. Okay, great. That's why you're doing them. Shove the rule in your head, run around the house, recite, recite until it sinks in. But most people, the most the mistakes they're making now is more about the reading comp. And the explanations are focusing on the law, not the reading. So again, always take ownership. Always uh, uh, ask yourself, why did I miss this question? And remember, if you did get it down to two and you knew that it was a battery question and one answer said yes, because John committed a harmful or offensive contact and one answer said no, because John didn't intend to hit him. Well, I know both of those answers are about a battery, John. I knew it was a battery question. Well, if you're looking at the two and they're both about a battery, they always come to opposite conclusions, which means what? You didn't read the facts carefully enough. Go back to the facts. If you got it down to the two liable, I know John's going to win. If you're looking at the two that come to the same conclusion, again, what does it mean? You don't know what the issue is. Because the two that say libel, constitutional, admissible, guilty, will always be about different issues, different crimes, different torts, different amendments. Contrast the answers. Don't compare. Remember, there are no three good answers and you have to find the best. Detox yourself from that stupid word. There are no best answers. There is the specific answer to what the facts say. Connect those dots. I'm always saying in these things, you're always trying to pick the most specific answer to what the facts say, not what you think, not what you think they want you, where they want you to go. Trust what the facts say. So as you're doing your practice, the only way that number continues to go up and gains that consistency that everyone wants is from usually a couple of rules you forgot and you shove them back in there. Great. 
but mo you're not trying to learn more law now. Whatever you know, you're pretty much just trying to hold on to those seven subjects. Stuff keeps falling out, so you put them back in there, which is why I'm recommending every day you pick a random MBE topic and you do a good refresher. You push those rules out. Keep everything juggling in the air. Everything's always going to keep falling. You pick, pick it up. But don't be spending three hours on Saturday with the subjacent lateral support rule or the weird rap rule. You give them th those questions. You're trying to maintain the law you have and reduce the silly mistakes. And that's worth at least two to three, three to four, five percent, which is why many, many students who do this actually get their highest score on the day of the test. In other words, they peak on exam day. Because they finally realize if sitting in the room, okay, I know this. I'm not making that mistake. I'm going to slow down and get this question right. And they get four or five more in the morning and four or five more in the afternoon that they never were getting in practice. Because they basically finally say, you know what, bleep it. If I'm here, I'm just going to go shut up and pick it like John says. Focus on approach. Reading. Not doing as many as fast. Stop with the timing. You want better reading because that makes you get more questions correct. So again... When you're doing the questions themselves, whether it's 20, 30, 40, 50, better quality reading, slow the hell down. Generally speaking, no one's going to have a time problem. The only way you have a time problem is if you don't know enough law. That's why keep that review going. And that means you're staring at the question because you don't know what's going on. Or B, more pointedly, you're staring at the answer choices and you're afraid to shut up and pick it. But it's not a four-hour test they expect you to do in three hours. You have time to easily finish those 100 in each of those sessions. So don't think they're going to give you 80 questions that are four paragraphs long. They're not. In fact, anything, the trend is the fact patterns are much shorter and more to the point as a rule, as a rule. There's long ones, but you get my point. It's not, oh, my God, they're all incredible. They're all going to take me three minutes. Manage the test. Manage the test. Like Mahomes knew how to manage that game. He did, things weren't going well for him. He just threw the ball away. We're going to get the ball back. We'll be okay. You don't know? What's your default when you absolutely do not know what to do with the question? I think that's where the facts are going. That's the most specific answer. Shut up and pick it. Even when you don't know, every law graduate in America can say, I think the hypo is about line five. It's about the guy over there. It's about this guy over there. This is what happened to him. Shut up and pick the simplest answer based on the facts. If you do that 200 times, you're going to get the number that you need. Better reading for the next couple of days. Focus on the reading and the facts so you know what you're looking for when you go into the answer choices. Maintain that daily set through the weekend before the exam. Whatever amount of questions, you focus on approach. If you're taking uh, both parts, MEE and MPT, I would do MEE -E, uh, after my essay prep. MPT, the only reason, and again, I'm no expert on the MPT. I don't claim to be, but I know from just anecdotal people who I talk to, the most important, the most, the number one reason why people don't score as high as they want to an MPT is they say, I know how to write a memo, John. Practicing doing it is the most important thing. The weekend is a great time for those who work. Use it during the week for your MBE and MEE and leave Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday for the MPT. You get better with your organization, your time management, et cetera. Practice the different formats that the different uh, uh, MPTs are looking for. Even if it's the second, third, or fourth one that you did, it's going to be much more organized and clear on the day of the test. I can't tell you how many people I talk to. I say, how many MPTs did you do? One. Well, no wonder it's going to you know, be a little choppy. No wonder you're going to have time problem. I don't care how great of a memo you write in an office. You don't know how to do this in, four, in an hour and a half under that kind of pressure. So the number one uh, 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 tip for MPT improvement is practice. You do as many as you can. Again, it's not about how many. It's just doing what you can to make the game day more repetitive, more instinctive. For SA2, write, 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 write. You, however, you, whatever your time uh, limitations are, but don't just outline and don't just issue spot, write. You can only write one, so write one. You can write a little more, but you don't want to burn out, so write one and write an issue from another topic. When you're not able to, if you're driving to work, driving home, taking the bus, taking the train, you, whatever you're doing when you're not physically able to write, what can you always be doing? What I believe. 
okay, if I get a contract that say, I know I need to be looking for a formation, statute of fraud, misrepresentation, parole evidence. I know those eight, nine, 10 rules they always seem to test on over and over again. Speak, recite those rules. If you could speak the definitions, you can type them and you're going to go faster because you're going to be more confident. So you balance your prep, MBE, MEE, MPT, if you can, if not on the weekend, you balance that a little more, a little less, depending on your schedule and depending on your strengths and weaknesses, but don't go all in on one to the negligence or the detriment of the other one. And you keep some balance routine all the way through that weekend before the exam. If you are taking uh, uh, both parts, you're taking an essay portion on Tuesday, whatever jurisdiction you're in, then I recommend, again, whatever is your comfort and your confidence, you know me, I'm here to build confidence and reduce stress. To me, if you're doing both parts, then on the Monday before the bar, you go all in. Oh, and by the way, if you have any problems, you know, Adapt Bar has a new writing program. If you think you need a little bit of that kick, if I, and I don't keep up with the logistics, so I apologize, but I'm sure that whatever support program, if you last minute, you need something, check out the Adapt Bar writing program. If you can get some last minute help there, God knows that would always be beneficial. Uh, but if you're taking an essay portion, that Monday before the exam, I recommend going all in on essay. If you're having to travel, you get to the hotel, wherever you're going. If not, me, I wear out the carpet in my house or the floor in my ho house or hotel room by constantly reciting those rules that I'm going to see in those different subjects all day long. If I get this, this is what I'm going to write. If I get that, that's what I'm going to write till I have laryngitis and I can't take it anymore. All day Monday, so that Tuesday morning, when they say go, the rules will literally fall out of your mouth, onto your fingers, and onto the exam soft or whatever. And now all you're doing is just copying and pasting facts. If you're only taking the MBE, no essay, then yeah, do your last set on uh, Monday and do that last set with the review. And Tuesday, I would be just reviewing mistakes. So we'll go back. If you are taking the essay portion and MPT, whatever Tuesday, now you're prepared. You spent all day Monday doing that. You knock out those essays, you IRAC or CRAC, whatever your jurisdiction pr uh, provides, and you knock the hell out of that thing. You'll feel like a million dollars when you walk out of that room saying, boy, I'm glad I typed all that stuff out. I feel really great. I'm glad I did the third MPT. I was much more organized now. Excellent. Tuesday night, what do you do? I recommend just watching some TV and relaxing and not doing anything because it's a lot and emotionally and physically that adrenaline crashes and you are tired, but you're going to be tempted to do something. Me, I don't be, I'm not a believer with the outlines. If you feel there's a subject or two that you need for your own confidence and security, you want to do a quick refresher, then go ahead. Absolutely. But you're going to be burnt out with that. What I recommend is have for the next couple of weeks, the stupidest, silliest mistakes that you make on these practice sets for the next couple of weeks, star or flag the worst reading mistakes that you made. The silliest thing. I can't believe I did that. John would kill me. Oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Have a little set, a little library of those questions. And either A, the Tuesday night before and the Wednesday morning before you even go to the exam. Just sit quietly and review those. See how stupid those mistakes are. I should have just slowed down and spot the issue. It was right there in front of me. I changed my answer. What the hell was I thinking? Not to beat yourself up again about it, but to say, man, look how many questions are just sitting right there on the plate. Yeah, when I go in there, I'm going to be more focused and determined to slow down, to be more careful with my reading. Make sure I'm picking that specific answer. Don't change an answer ever. Don't skip anything. Trust what the facts say. The more you look at those mistakes, the more kind of edgy you get. Yeah, yeah. And you get a little pissed off. I always believe anger is the best emotion. Hey, he's right. I worked too hard for the last three and four months. I know what the hell I'm doing. I just have to be a little more careful on more questions. Use those stupid mistakes as a motivation and a focus. And if I can just reduce a couple in the morning and a couple in the afternoon, wow, that's a lot more points. So Tuesday night, I just recommend, recommend sitting on my couch or on the bed, looking at those stupid, silly mistakes and saying, hey, this is stupid. I can do better than this. I can't eliminate the mistakes. You don't need to. All you need to do is reduce it by a couple. Remember, especially on UBE jurisdictions, I keep saying this every time we're together. You're, you're not trying to get a certain number to pass the MBE. You're just trying to get as many right as possible. So it balances out with the writing. 
You're just trying to like 52 pickup sticks. How many can I get? How many can I pick up? So by definition, if you're just reducing a couple in the morning, a couple afternoon, you got four, five, six more raw questions correct. Oh my gosh, that's that's incredible what that's going to do to your overall score when they add it into the curve. So take the pressure off of what I don't know and be more confident on rules that you can know by keeping more of that juggling around and by focusing all on reading comp. I'm all, you know me, I'm all about the reading. So when I walk into that room, I'm ready. You're too tired to do anything Tuesday night. I totally agree. Watch some TV and that's it. Wednesday morning, again, especially for those of you that are taking the MEE or in any, any essay portion. Sometimes a lot of people tell me it takes some questions to kind of warm up till I get my brain wrapped around MBE, especially if you are doing any essays on Tuesday, you're so focused on that essay stuff. Now, hey, you want to really, really focus on getting back into the whole mindset of MBE. So that's why I say even in the morning, just reviewing three, four, five of those silly mistakes kind of gets you back into the whole issue spotting. It's like a warm up, so to speak, without doing any questions. Questions. I don't recommend doing any fresh questions, but you're using that as a warm up. So when the proctor says begin, you feel like you've already begun. You've already done the four or five. Monitor that little voice in your head. You're sitting there. The proctor says begin. Don't be the first one to get the first question. You got to fight yourself. In the morning, the adrenaline's rushing so much, you go too fast at the beginning. Then the adrenaline crashes and you're starting to peter out at the end. You're trying to gain that consistency, like the quarterback, a little clock in your head. More time up here. Know what I'm looking for. What is each answer about? Shut up and pick it. Clear your head. Let me do the next one. You're doing 200 MBEs. Each question is an MBE by itself. Separate subject, separate rule. If you can maintain that consistency, you're gold. Many people anecdotally tell me one session seems harder than the other. Man, in the morning, John, those questions were much harder than adaptive bar. Then in the afternoon, felt like I got 90 right or vice versa. So sometimes you get a different book, blah, blah. Sometimes one set of 100 seems a little more densely written. The answer choices are very closely related. If you seem to have a tough patch in the morning, don't panic and don't freak out. That's normal. It's foreseeable, pun intended. That's what they do. Where and how, I don't know. But if you're having 10 or 12 or thir six or seven, however the number is, that's a little weird. That's a little weird. I don't know that. If you're feeling that, everyone else in the country is feeling that. Okay. They're not getting you. So kind of take a big picture and say, okay, this is just a couple of weird ones. I can do this. What do I do? I calmly dumb it down, read the facts. Everyone else is having the same problem. Don't skip it. Don't pick the weird Latin phrase. Just shut up and pick the simplest answer based on the facts. That's where I think they're going. That's the answer. Now I got over the bad hump and now I'm going to get 30, 40 in a row that I have a chance of getting right. Manage the test correctly. Number one is not hard or easy. Number 100 is not hard or easy. That's what I'm talking about. Stay away from these conspiracy theories. If you got a, what seemed like a little harder in the morning, it was a little tougher to figure out where they're going. You know, in the afternoon, usually it's going to be a little more straightforward or vice versa, but it all balances out in the end. You're trying to get the gross number of questions correct. So you steal from as wherever and however you can by managing your emotions, managing yourself, and sticking to the fundamentals of hearing the voice in your head, issue, what is each answer, et cetera. No matter what, once you're sitting in that room, nothing feels like it did at home, right? Like I said earlier, just like that game. They're all throwing up in the bathroom before the kickoff, right? 100 million people, don't let me be the one to drop the ball. And you know who make generally the team, the, the players that make the mistakes? The ones that are still thinking about it. That's just what happens. You need the trick, since you, some of you still love that word. The trick is to flip it around and say, these are 200 like I've been doing the last 1,000 or 2,000. It's the same rules. They can't change the law on me. They're just changing the hypo. They're changing the language and the answer. I think I mentioned when we first did the first one in, in July when I was in Tampa at the Florida bar. A lot of people uh, said to me after, you know, John, I knew exactly where these questions were going. I was comfortable with the law. I issued spotted. I knew. But when I got to the answers, there were a bunch of questions where the answers looked a little squirrely. The language a little funky. That's what, so that's what I'm doing. Just changing the words around a little bit. That's where I'm preaching. Always be focusing on what each answer is talking about. They're changing the answers. Sometimes I've said many times, including in my video, 
They're not giving you the answer choice that has all of the buzzwords, the perfectly stated definition. Many of the answers are in plain English. So you can feel like, okay, yeah, this is a partially integrated contract. Yep, there's, there's, the, the, the guy's unavailable. You kind of have the buzzword in your head. When you go into the answer, you don't see it. Wait a minute, where's the answer? Plain English, plain English. Connect those dots. Why are the other answers wrong? Many times the answers with the buzzwords are talking about other torts and other crimes. And the correct answer, again, is just written in plain English. So don't be afraid. Don't panic in the room. If you begin to see some weirdly worded ones, breathe, issue spot, and do everything you can to stick to the fundamentals. Nothing goes absolutely according to plan, right? That's just the way that it is. It won't but I can manage my emotions and my fundamental. If you're practicing the fundamentals the right way, that's the, those are the people who pass. They're not worried about the question 34 when they're on question 54. They're doing one at a time to the best of their ability. They shut up and pick, then they go on to the next one. And if you can do that a little more consistently than the guy next to you, you pass because the numbers are going to be there. And if you can combine that little extra confidence with your writing, being a little more organized, more rule statements to get down there. I organize time management, get an extra three, five, six, eight, whatever on my MPT, because it's not disorganized. I had better time, all that stuff. When Tuesday night rolls around, yeah, you're thinking about whatever you ran out of time not to talk about on an essay, but in your gut, you know, yeah, I, I did okay. Yeah, thank God I wrote. Thank God I wrote. No way I didn't get enough. Now you can relax. And now you walk in the next day and you say, I'm just going to do those 200 on Wednesday, just like I've been doing the last 1,000 or 2,000 on Adaptabar. It never feels the same, but it is. And if you can get in here and get in here and treat those 200 on exam day like you've been doing now so wonderfully at home for the next couple of weeks especially, you will have enough points to pass. Fundamentals, consistency, balance with your prep, really focus on the reading comp, not the minutia of law, stay out of those details, take ownership for the ones you screwed up, fix those, look at those mistakes, see where you can improve on that reading. And the more consistent you can be, the better, better you're going to do. Let me see if we can take a quick look here. If we uh, take a look at some questions here. So I think I answered some of these. So some people are talking about uh, getting confused between some Florida. Again, I'm in Florida. So if you're getting confused between the Florida rule and that stuff, that's why I always believe keep everything as separate as you can. Have two outlines. Um, there really is no trick other than if you're taking Florida, really, really just try to focus on a separate set at a totally separate time of the day with those Florida questions. The key with the Florida questions are just constantly doing enough of them. So you do some, the 30 or 40 tonight, you do 30 or 40, another subject tomorrow. It's almost like you're trying to, I don't like to say this, almost like be make, taking screenshots, being so familiar with what those hypos look like. The weird Persterpes half-blood, the special voting class C-share, you're not going to know but there's those three four extra rules that you can focus on the rules that you can practice as many questions as you can and trust me the numbers are going to be there uh you should be answering again i wouldn't be worrying about reviewing questions you've already done other than moving forward now as you're doing your new practice mix set every day when you get those, when you, whatever mistakes you're making, I would be focusing on those mistakes now. And again, as I said earlier, focusing on was it the law? Was it the facts? What did I do? Yes, the multiple choice for Florida, if you're taking the Florida, is the worst part of the test. There's no question about it. You're just trying to do the best you can by being as comfortable with those questions. Don't get in the minutia of that outline. Practice as many of those questions as you possibly can. Um most likely, oh yeah, do you have any tips for questions that say most likely or least likely? These are terrible. Or where it says ask for the best. There is no best. Remember, when they're talking about what's the most serious crime John can, was, could be convicted of, what would be the best argument? You're still focusing on that fact pattern. The strongest and the best and the most serious is still based on what the facts said. So no matter what, so some of those are very badly worded. I totally agree. You're basically just saying, what did the fact pattern tell me? You're trying to connect the dots. Um, is it true for students who receive them? Um, do you have any tips? Okay, we did that one. Sorry about that. I talked about Monday. Um, 
again, yeah, and don't worry about total of questions for now. Again, like I say, if you have more time and you're doing spreading out the day, 35, 40, 50 tops, you're working 25, 30. The goal right now is not how many overall. The goal is how well are you reading for the next couple of weeks. So that's where I say, if you want to do one of those OPEs, you want to do them this weekend. Don't do them close to the end of next week, right before the test. Absolutely. If you're taking any more of those OPEs, should be Friday, Saturday, or Sunday this week. Then you focus on that mixed daily set. So you balance if you can. And this way, you're focusing on improving. Whatever you did or didn't do on the first 1,100 or 1,200 or 1,500, you just use those to learn how to read the questions. The key now is, how do you do on the last 200 or 300 that you do in these last couple of weeks? Remember, you're not getting graded on what you've done since the beginning. You're only getting graded on that day. So you want to feel like you can actually peak on exam day. Many of the students I've worked with who have failed the bar previous times end up getting 20 extra points on the MBE where they pass. Not because they're smarter, not because they learned 150 more rules. They just read better and reduced the silly, stupid mistakes. Plus, they were more confident. So when they had to trust the facts, again, like anything, when you do it from a position of confidence, it's going to turn out much, much better. Is it a good idea to do two days of a simulated UBE or should, would that lead to burnout? I, again, whatever you need to do for your own comfort and confidence, you should. I certainly believe that, you know, if you're going to do any kind of simulated anything at this point, this weekend would be the last time to do it. And I would do a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, an a MBE exam one day and then your uh, MEEs the next day. So if you want to do a two day, you don't need to. I'm more about seven days a week for the next two weeks of doing a little bit of both every single day. But if you were going to do something, this weekend would be my recommended end so I can get back to doing the daily balance sets every single day. Overall, overall, balance is the key. Split up your day into thirds if you're taking three different parts. That's the goal. You can't. Sometimes you need to rob from Peter to pay Paul. I'm feeling a little bad about MBE. I'm going to do a little more question. I'm feeling really good about MBE. Keep doing a small set every day no matter what. Don't get happy with yourself on one and stop doing it and all of a sudden go to the other one. The balance is the key. It may not be perfect every day, but what's my last comment? If at the end of every night you're laying in bed, you're staring at the bedroom ceiling, and you're saying, I'm nervous, I'm this, I'm that. Of course, if you can say, I've actually practiced all parts of the test. I've taken a mini bar exam every day. You're going to get better at all parts. The good part will maintain, and the ones that are a little lower begin to slowly improve. You just don't want to bomb anything. And the people who bomb are the ones that stop practicing and just only worry about their good stuff. That's why I'm saying a mix set on MBE is the key. Don't just do the good subjects. Get it all in because you're going to see that just that way in a couple of weeks. Balance, consistency, a little bit of everything every day to the best of your ability. Practice taking the test. Mix set on MBE. Practice writing essay. Don't just issue spot an outline. Take some time and practice a couple of MPTs under time conditions so it's not the first time you're doing it on exam day. If you can focus on that again, that's a t-shirt. Practice taking the test. Practice taking the test. And wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're spitting out some recitation of law. Juggle those buzzwords for essays. Hear yourself say those words. For MBE, pick a random topic and just try to have those words, have those buzzwords flying around in your head. For most of you in a UBE jurisdiction, most of the law, a lot of the law on MBE is the same you'd have to write on an essay. So the more you're pushing those buzzwords to the front of your brain by speaking, the more and more and more is going to stick. At the end of the day, everybody does the best they can. You know me. When you're in that room, put that, sh that battery back on your shoulder, okay? Even if you're faking it, they can, you, they can smell insecurity, okay? You know how important confidence is on this test. So when you sit down in the room, if you're going to go there, then you say, if I'm going down, I'm going down swinging. Just like the Chiefs, the best defense is a good offense. So when I read that question, whether I know it or not, I'm going to read that damn fact pattern. I'm going to feel like, hey, if I'm bubbling in a circle, there's going to be a purpose as to why that I'm doing it. Confidence, slowing down, issue spotting, reading comp, and for God's sakes, shut up and pick it and be confident and aggressive. And I look forward to hearing great news from everybody uh, in a couple of months.
stay confident, keep up the great work. We really appreciate you being here with us on a tough uh, night and feel free to stay in touch. Uh, we will see you and speak to you very, very soon. Take care.